Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Megan Faulkner Brown, and I am the founder of the Sweet Tooth Fairy. And I'm so excited to hang out with you guys today for the next hour or so, playing with cake and frosting and sprinkles and candy and all the fun things in preparation for Easter this weekend. So, um, again, thank you for being here. I'm going to go over just some like basic cake construction, and then I'm going to talk about how we can get like a smooth finish on our cakes without using fondant, which I know fondant can be, <clears throat> excuse me, a little intimidating. Um, and so we're just going to, just going to pretend like fondant isn't a thing today. And we're going to talk about buttercream and just some different techniques that you can use to get that really, really smooth finish. And then we're going to play, 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 which is so fun. So you can see here, I have a bunch of fun sprinkles and icing decorations and some pressed candy and even some new product, which is a whipped frosting mix, which I'll talk about a little bit later. You can find all of these amazing products in the food crafting aisles of Michael's. And with Easter this weekend, obviously we wanted to focus in on some of this Easter fun. So we'll play with this. We'll just kind of get creative, throw out some fun ideas. Um, and then I just wanna say if at all, at any time during the class, if you have any questions, any comments, anything you need me to clarify, you can put that in the chat. And lovely Lorenzo is just off camera <laughs> right here. And um, he'll, he'll ask me some of those questions if it's something that he can't help you with right away. So let's let's get started. So first things first, um, I wanna just talk about cake prep. So you'll see I have three layers here and this is delicious carrot cake. And um, one thing that I like to share with people is just how much easier your life is if you bake your cakes ahead of time and then saran wrap them and then put them in the freezer and just let them be for a day or two or several days if you need to um just so that you don't have to feel so overwhelmed with this enormous project of making a cake from start to finish in one day so you know maybe you come home from school and you have a few free hours before you have you know I don't know, kids coming home, or if you're in high school and you have practice later or something, and you just want to have a little bit of a creative outlet, you can make your cake, get it nice and cool, cover it in, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, like a, a saran wrap or a plastic film. You just want it airtight when you put it in the freezer so that as it's sitting in there, it doesn't take on any, I don't know, any other frozen food smells that you have in your in your freezer, like pizza or I don't know, dino nuggets, something like that. So that will just ensure that it stays protected from the air in there, but then it will just stay nice and sealed. And then fast forward to whatever day it is that you are now ready to construct your cake and decorate your cake. You just take it out of the freezer and it's so easy. It's just something you can get done ahead of time, knock it off your list and a few days or several days down the line, you can just attack it. So, all right. The next thing is I have here this fun little like silicone mat. It's actually just like a hot pad, but I'm just going to put it down. This is so that when you are frosting your cake, doing your crumb crow and decorating it, your cake isn't going to slip slide all over the place. So you don't have to have one of these. You could also just put a little bit of tape, double-sided tape down, or you, you know, you can make a little loop with um, some tape and stick your cake board down on your cake table so that then when you put on the cake, again, it's not gonna slide all over the place because you'll know as you make cakes, right? You're spreading and you're pushing and sometimes it has a tendency to kind of wobble all over the place. You can get away with not putting anything down too. You just kind of have to pay attention to the force with which you apply your frosting and such. So, all right, so non-stick little pad. I have my cardboard cake circle here and I'm just going to put a little bit of frosting down. So I have some delicious cream cheese frosting here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pipe a little bit of a spirally circle-y situation on the cake board. 
And then this is glue. So think of this as your glue to stick your cake to your cardboard cake circle so that it is securely attached. You can just kind of give it a nice little firm pressing down. All right, now I have that same cream cheese frosting right here in a bowl. And I'm still gonna use the frosting that I have in the piping bag, but I just wanted to show you or just give you some ideas at this step. So I'm just gonna use today the cream cheese frosting as the cake filling. So if you wanted to do an, a different a different filling, you know, let's say you, I don't know, you weren't doing carrot cake, but you wanted to do like strawberry or raspberries or whatnot. Um, this is where you would pipe a circle around, like you're tracing the circle around your uh, cake ground like this, okay? So think of it like you're building a, a, a wall so that any of the filling that you put inside isn't gonna like creep out and seep out. Cause you can imagine if you take a lemon curd or let's say strawberry preserves or even like a pudding or a mousse or something that you wanted to put in the middle, you, that stuff is kind of jiggly, right? So what would happen if you just straight up put that in here and then put another cake around on top, it's gonna slip slide all over the place. So you can create this wall and it's, it's thicker, right? It's with the cream cheese, buttercream frosting. So it has some structural integrity to it. So then that means that you have this protective wall and then you could put your filling in there. So again, today we're just gonna be using the cream cheese frosting as the filling, but I just wanted to let you know how you would do that if you wanted to put you know, a different uh, filling inside of the cake. So the other thing is, again, I just have the cream cheese frosting here, but here's an opportunity for you to just kind of get creative with what you put in your cake filling. So you could take, you know, chocolate chips or crushed candy or, you know, freeze dried berries or whatever it is and just fold it into the frosting. Sometimes I'll chop up candy bars or just anything. Look in your pantry, <laughs> see what you have that you think would taste good smothered and coated and covered in frosting and just put it on in there and give it a stir. And then you just put it on top of this cake layer and you spread it around like so. Now you can see this cake turner is a game changer when it comes to decorating cakes. You don't have to have one. You can kind of, you can kind of fake one. <laughs> I've, I've faked many a, uh, a cake turner in my day. You can use like big number ten cans of, you know, like food storage style fruit or vegetables, and then just put a big plate on top of it, and then you can kind of use that if you don't have a cake turner. You can just get creative and anything that you find that you think would be supportive enough to support the cake, you can use that. All right, so here's the next layer, like so, just popping it right on. <clears throat> the other thing I will say about the making the cakes ahead of time and freezing them is just that the cakes are so much easier to work with when they are chilled. Um, we're in here, we're under studio lights, so it's a little, it's a little warm. So you can see the cake is, I wouldn't call it like totally wobbly, but you can imagine if you baked a cake same day and it's just sitting at room temperature, you can still use it for sure, but it's just, it hasn't like, I don't know. I just think it sets up so much better in the freezer and it just kind of is stronger so that when I'm pushing things around, or if I'm rolling the cake and sprinkles or whatever, it's just nice and taut and you don't have to worry about the cake breaking off or falling apart. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, and then we're gonna put our final, final top on. Now we did three layers. You definitely don't have to do 
three layers. I just think more is more, but the more the merrier because who doesn't love cake and frosting, right? So I am now going to do a crumb coat. So if you're not familiar with what a crumb coat is, it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a coat of frosting that likely will have little crumbs of cake that will be in it. And the point of a crumb coat is to make sure that your cake stays like clean for your final stages of frosting and decorating. So you'll see here as I start to apply the crumb coat, some of this th this cake, like the edges, will rub off, the, it'll fall off. You can see, um, you know, if the cake has any kind of inclusions, like this one has, don't judge, but this one has some nuts and some raisins. I'm, I normally don't put fruit where chocolate should go, but it is a carrot cake, so we did include some. Um, but so some of those things might fall out and that's okay. That's because this coat is just going to be kind of a sloppy, sloppy kind of looking cake. So I am just taking a icing spatula and I'm just going to start at the bottom. I just scoop, just scoop the spatula into the bowl and just start pressing on while I am spinning the cake, the cake turner with my less dominant hand. So I'm actually having the cake turner do a lot of the work. You can see I don't really move my dominant hand, which is my right hand, that much at this stage because I'm just I'm letting the cake cake turner do what it does best, you know. So. Now you guys can see, see how it just has this sheer look to it. Oftentimes people want this look. They'll call it a naked cake. They'll call it semi-naked. They'll call it sheer. And it's a beautiful, beautiful look. And um, that's, that's how you achieve it is just a thin, a thin crumb coat. Now, if you're frosting, if you're if you're doing this stage and you feel like your frosting is is too thick that it's peeling off some of the cake, I I would venture to say that if my fellow bakers on the class today have made cakes before, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like you put on your frosting and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, half of my cake just crumble, <laughs> crumble off. Maybe not half, but you know what I'm saying. What you can do is just take some of whatever liquid you use to make your frosting. You can just add a little bit more liquid. So if it's milk, if it's cream, if it's water, if it's juice, if it whatever it is, you just add just little bits at a time. You just want to thin out the frosting so that it works in better like cohesion with the texture of your cake. All right, so can you see the crumbs? See how there's, there's legit crumbs on our cake, guys, <laughs> which is great. So I'm just going to kind of smooth it out as best I can, like so. And then at this point, we go and we put it in the fridge to set up or freezer. So... I'm going to ask Lorenzo if he doesn't mind to please take this. We have a little camera magic happening here in the studio. Thank you, dear. And one thing I wanted to say, though, going back to the beginning when I just talked about baking your cakes ahead of time, you can also so bake your cake rounds ahead of time, put them in the freezer. They're safe. They're good for literally months if you are that prepared and that much of a planner. Um, but you can also get your cake to this stage, to the crumb coat stage, wrap it tightly or put it in a big unscented, you know, trash can liner. Sounds gross, but it's not. <laughs> it's just a very clean, unscented bag. You could just use that to wrap it up, put it in your freezer. And again, at whatever point later that day, that week, you can take it out and you can decorate it then. So Again, my my hope and my goal is that you feel inspired and motivated to to do this and not feel like it's such a big or big ordeal. It might feel like it. And trust me, when you've done it and you've accomplished it, it's amazing. And like kudos to you. I'm just trying to help 
give you little tips to kind of spread out, spread out the project if you want to work that way. Thank you. Okay, so ta-da! <laughs> we have a chilled carrot cake right now. You can see this is actually on a um another like cardboard cake round. And um so you can get those at Michael's. They have different options. And that's, I would say, kind of more for like presentation, right? The one that I used initially was the same size as the cake. And I do it that way just so that when I am decorating it, that I just don't get the cake board. I get it the least amount of messy <laughs> that I can. It's just a little easier to do some of the stuff not having the like decorative cake plate underneath it. So all right, at this point, are there any questions? We have one question. I'm gonna hear Lorenzo and then I'm gonna say it out loud. So Jackson, how necessary is it to cut the cake in half or take the top crust off? Oh, oh, okay. So the question is how necessary is it to cut the cake in half or to take the top crust off? So a couple things. I think in my humble opinion, it just depends on how much you like your cake to frosting ratio. There are some people in this world, I cannot relate, but who are not frosting people. <laughs> and that's okay. We love you just the same. But if you're, if you kind of lean that way, then I would say don't cut your cake in half at all. Leave like thicker, thicker cake layers, cake rounds, so that you don't have like a ton of frosting to cake ratio. Um, and, but if, if you're okay with, you know, I don't know, equal, equal proportions cake to frosting, then I think cutting it in half is, is great. It's a great way to go. Um, as far as like taking off the top layer. So if I'm understanding you correctly, one thing that happens when you use uh, like a nonstick cooking spray or, you know, if you oil the pan or, you know, you use like a shortening or whatever, you'll notice when you bake the cake, there is like this, it's like a cake film that attaches to wherever the batter touches the pan that you have just greased. So I personally, with almost every cake I use, I just take a really long serrated knife and I just like shave that stuff off. I, I don't think it actually like tastes bad or looks weird or whatever. Just in my head, I know like, oh, that's just a little bit of super oily cake batter. That's like this thin little film that has now all over the cake. So I just, I take it and I just kind of shave it off. So total personal preference. I say, give it a try. And if you like the way the cake looks or tastes better, or, you know, maybe you don't, you don't like that, or you don't think the work, the effort is worth, you know, maybe not that different of an outcome, then no big deal. Truth is cake with frosting on it. It's kind of hard for it to like be bad in my opinion, because it's just delightfulness with a little, little and a lot of bit of sugar. So I don't think it will affect the flavor that much, but I hope I answered your question. I hope I understood that correctly. If not, you can clarify with Lorenzo and he'll re-ask me and then I'll just blabber some more <laughs> about, about it. Okay. One other question. How, uh, how long did you leave it in the freezer before decorating that same day? Okay, the question is how long do you leave it in the freezer before decorating it that same day? So here's the thing. When using like an, a, an American buttercream that crusts. So do, do you know what I mean when I say crust is like when you're using a buttercream like this, granted this one has cream cheese, so it's kind of like a little bit of a hybrid, but there it's not like tacky to touch right? You put it on, you don't even necessarily have to put it in the fridge or freezer for it to like set up, meaning for it to kind of feel dry. So if I were doing like a crumb coat and then going to decorate it, honestly, there have been times where I've left it in the freezer for like 15 minutes because I know 
okay, my cake is chilled. Everything is like structurally good enough for me to start attacking the decorating portion of it. It doesn't, in my opinion, in my experience, it doesn't need like overnight or days or several hours. You just need your frosting to like set up and adhere to the cake. So if you're in a pinch and you've like, I've got 15 minutes for this bad boy to sit in the freezer, you'll be totally fine. Because again, the goal is just that the frosting isn't, doesn't have that like wet tacky feeling to it. So again, I hope I answered your question. We good? Yeah. Okay. Again, if not, Lorenzo is the man. So, all right. So again, a little bit of TV magic. This has been chilling in the freezer, fridge rather, for more than 15 minutes. <laughs> That's just because we, it's kind of how we have to roll here in studio. But all right. What I wanted to talk to you about are just a couple different things when it comes to like fondant free smooth cakes. So the, the most important being the texture of your frosting. Now I, I touched a little bit on it earlier, meaning if, if you're using a buttercream that is just like super thick and like heavy, you're for sure, for sure going to want to thin it out just a little bit because the goal when trying to mimic fondant as best we can is you don't want like a bunch of air bubbles in the frosting. So you, so you don't want it to look super like holy, um, where there's just a bunch of like holes all over the place. So when you're making your frosting, what I like to do is after I've used, so I use a stand mixer or, you know, a hand mixer, but after I've done that, you can kind of do like a, I don't know, call it like a test with, <laughs> with just a handheld spatula. And I don't know if you can like see. Yeah. Okay. So what I do always is I then take just my hand and a spatula after I've used a, used a mixer to actually make the frosting. And then I'll just kind of fold it back and forth, back and forth, just to kind of help settle some of those air bubbles that have just been born by having been mixed with a beater or a paddle attachment. So I'll just kind of fold, fold it so it looks like nice and creamy. Now, if at this stage you're looking at it and it's still super thick and you just see all these air bubbles everywhere, again, just add a little bit of, of moisture to it by way of milk, cream, again, juice, water, whatever it is that you use to make the frosting anyway, or initially. So that's kind of like first things first is the texture of your frosting. And it's going to sound kind of like weird, <laughs> but once you kind of get to know your frosting, and know how it reacts to different, you know, temperatures or humidity or dryness or whatever you have going on in the kitchen and in the environment that you're making the frosting, you'll get to know it well, right? Where you're like, okay, I've made this X amount of times now. And I know I just need to increase this a little bit here or add a little bit more powdered sugar there. Like you can kind of just play around with it to where you get it to the point where you're like, okay, I know it, it knows me and we work well together in this, in this state. So, um, all right. So next I am going to just take the frosting like I did when I was doing the crumb coat. And again, I have some in the piping bag. You could also just squeeze. Actually, I'll show that. Why not? We'll show that. So this is just the cream cheese, buttercream in a piping bag. And all I'm doing, look, I'm not even moving my dominant hand, which is my right hand. I'm using my left hand to spin the cake turner. And I'm just squeezing, applying like equal amounts of pressure while I spin the cake. See how, again, I'm not moving my right hand at all. I'm just, just squeezing like this. Squeeze equal amount of pressure. I think I did this in the last class. This is also just kind of like a look that you can do, you know, a little bit of a horizontal 
horizontal ruffles, kind of. All right. So if you don't have your piping bag, again, you just put your, your frosting on a spatula like I did for the crumb coat and just apply it. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this spatula and I'm just going to smooth out these little horizontal ruffles. And again, I'm I'm using this cake turner, right? I'm I'm not at this stage really using my right hand that much. I'm using it to kind of be the stabilizing force of the frosting application, but I'm pushing and pulling the cake turner primarily. All right. So you can see we have some, some holes, we have a little bit of mess around the base, but that's okay, because we'll talk about that here in a sec. Okay, so you can see like right here, see how there's a little bit of some miss, quote unquote, like missing frosting. You just take some more, put it on there, and fill in any other spaces that you see like that. And then what we're gonna do is take a flat edge. So you can either use like a bench scraper like this, or there's different cake combs that you can get that oftentimes they're double-sided, right? So here's a scalloped edge, here's a straight edge. The other thing that you can do, which no joke, this is a true story, was inspiration behind designing this vintage Sweet Tooth Fairy cake comb <laughs> was a drywall tool. I would go to home, well, I would go to a home improvement store and buy one of the drywall like trowel things. And I would get the, you know, the one that I think would work for my tall cakes. And I used that. So if you have one of those lying around, you can also use, you can also use that. Um, but that's where I designed this, you know, this tall tall doohickey right here. But these are lifesavers and they're so fun when we're not going for like the fondant look, the fondant free, fondant free, yeah, fondant free look. Cause there's just so many fun different options, but I digress, get something flat. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is again, going back to the method of letting your less dominant hand turn the table and your more dominant hand be the stabilizing kind of force behind this. You're just going to leave your hand still while you're turning the cake, like so. And you'll notice there definitely will be spots that you're going to need to come back and fill in. Like there might be some some new kind of gaps or holes that you create essentially, but don't fret because we can definitely fix that. But what you kind of, what you want to do is just, it's like a gentle, smooth kind of turning of the table. So again, using that less dominant hand to turn, and then you're more dominant to hold like this. And then what I'll do is kind of up, up here, you can see it's not like super smooth or there's a little bit of frosting that's kind of fallen down the top. So you're just gonna come back with some frosting and just hit those spots. And then we'll just repeat what we just did. And then we'll add, we'll add some frosting to the top of the cake as well. So let's see, do this. So I like to do the top of the cake last because I feel like sometimes when you do that, it helps fill in the top of um, the top of the cake where some of the 
the little gaps were happening. Once you fill in the top and kind of pull the frosting around, it fills those in. But now, so you see how there's some overlap, but we'll take our scraper and we'll get rid of those. Like so. Slow, smooth. Then we'll take, we'll take our offset spatula. Then we'll kind of pull those in. So again, we're under studio lights in here. So this frosting is, doesn't set up like it would at home necessarily, but what you, couple other things that you can do to help with the smoothness without having to utilize fondant in your life <laughs> is um, so you can let your cake set up for, I would say, I don't know, probably five minutes or so in, in just at room temperature. Okay. So what you're looking for is for again, the cake to not be tacky. And when I say tacky, I mean like to touch, not, not tacky in like, you know, that kind of way, but so it's dry. And when I touch it, it's not peeling off or pulling off. And then what you can do is take, now it's going to sound crazy. And I don't think it will work live right now because again, we're under studio lights and it's sweating and I'm sweating and all the fun things. But um, you can take a paper towel and most paper towel designs will have a side that has like the embossed design and then a side that is flat. And you want to take the flat side, although it'd be fun to use a little bit of the, you know, the design side. And you can take your, the paper towel and pretend that there were just a few little like spots that you wanted to kind of iron out. Or if there was, I don't know, like a significant bubble that like every time you kind of try to touch, patch it up, it would just pull off more frosting or whatever. Just get your, get the frosting to a place where it's just a little soft or a little dry. And then you can take the paper towel and you can just kind of give it a nice little belly rub. And that'll help smooth, smooth it out. So the other thing is if you do have like a some fondant tools and you have that fondant like scraper, essentially that little tool looks like a little iron. Oh yeah, look, ah, magic, this guy. <laughs> um, you could take the paper towel and do that like around the sides. Um, so that's one other tip. And then the other thing is, I'm sure you, maybe you've tried this or intuitively you're like, wait, what if I just add some, some water to like the, the spatula and just kind of touch it up a little bit. You can totally do that. So you can take, get some warm water, warm to hot water, and you can take your icing spatula. I'd probably go with a smaller one at this point, because hopefully your smooth, like the work that you've done to give it that smooth look. It's not like you have a bunch of, you know, blemishes happening, but you can just get this a little bit wet in that warm water. And then you can just kind of touch things up as you need to. And you're not going to want to like drench it in water because um, the goal is to like heat the metal, not necessarily give your cake a warm shower. <laughs> so you just want to get it a little bit warm in there and just touch up any of like the imperfections that you might see. And um, so that's another way to smooth it out. Now, I will say, uh, as someone who has been doing this for, for a very long time, it's actually, it was 15 years ago that I opened our first retail bakery feels like a lifetime ago, but also yesterday. Um, 
I will say that the, I would say 99% of anyone who sees a cake that you make, they will be blown away. They will just think it's so amazing. It will look so good. It will taste so good. It will be so thought. They'll be like, so happy that you were so thoughtful in making it or bringing it to the party or using it for Easter or whatever it is. You might look at the cake and say, oh my word, there's some missing frosting right there. Or, oh no, this, you know, this carrot that I tried to pipe on top doesn't look the way that I think it should look. No one will know. No one will care. They will just be in awe of your creation and so thankful for it. As someone who looks at every cake she makes with that eye, I promise you, no one, no one cares. So, you know, we're all perfectly imperfect, cakes included. So go easy on yourself. And even though if you have some perfectionist, you know, tendencies, try to breathe and just, just be happy with the effort that you're putting in because it will not go unnoticed. And everyone is, is the better for it. So, um, that's just my little warm and fuzzy pep talk, but okay. At this point, any questions? No. All right. Thanks for the encouragement. Oh, you're welcome for the encouragement. Hey, we all need some encouragement, right? Everybody's going through it. And, um, I'm in your corner. I'm always in your corner. So Okay, at this stage, I'm going to show, actually, do you mind grabbing the, the whipped frosting? I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Okay, so one thing that's super exciting and so fun is this new product, which is, oh, okay, up, <laughs> okay, sorry, <laughs> around, there we go, there we go. Okay, so this is a whipped frosting mix, and it's so fun because depending upon what you are going for, whether you want like a whipped, light, and fluffy frosting, we have the directions on here how to do that. Or if you're looking for like a thicker and creamier buttercream frosting, we have directions on here for that. So this is new, available at Michael's, and I'm going to show you as best I can, just a little bit of the difference between the textures of this cream cheese buttercream and then this whipped frosting mix. I'm going to do some cute little like carrots on the top and um, we'll just show you. But it's so fun, so yummy, time saver, life saver, all the things. And all right, this is the... Oh, I get set up good, huh? <laughs> Okay, we're actually, we're going to pause that and we're just going to let it sit right here in real time. It's just going to warm up a little bit. I did have it in the fridge. That was 100% my fault. I asked Lorenzo to please just let it set up in the fridge so it didn't sit out under these lights during the whole class, but they'll, it'll soften just a little bit. It's still soft. Like I could definitely still type it. Absolutely but I'm just gonna let it get back to the texture that it was at room temperature. So you can see the difference between like a thicker, truer buttercream and one that's just a little bit like light, lighter and fluffier. And um, but yeah, we'll just leave those right there. We'll go to decorating around the side. And um, all right, next, you can see these fun, fun bowls with all these fun things again. Michael's is just pure joy. You can find all these fun things. We have this cute little sprinkle tackle box. There's these icing layons that are adorable, some bunnies, eggs. These are fun. These are edible wafer paper. And we have them in a few different sizes and colors. And then just some cute little, you know, bunny heads and carrot uh, pressed candy mixed with some non pearls and jimmies. Um, it, it's just so fun. So this is just where we are going to get a little bit creative now i how are we on time Pardon? okay so because i just have been sitting here blabbing <laughs> and um the, my my frosting now has a little crust to it so what do you think that means if i try to stick something on there right now it's not going to happen right so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to color a little bit of this cream cheese frosting. I'm just going to add some pink food coloring to it. 
And we're going to give the frosting or the cake another little coat of frosting because when you are when you are trying to now decorate it, your sprinkles aren't going to stick to the side. Now, if you're if you're not trying to get sprinkles to stick to the side, that's totally fine. You can pipe your border. You can do some piping on the outside and you're good. But since I'm going to kind of just show you, just show you how to be a little extra with your cake decorating, <laughs> um, I'm going to add another kind of little film of frosting so that the sprinkles will stick. So again, I just added some pink food coloring and I'm going to add I'm going to kind of do like this little some sprinkle or some frosting here and there. So you can see I'm not like fully coating it. I'm just taking a little bit of the pink and kind of dabbing it all over. And that's just because I'm I'm just trying to give it you know like a unique kind of watercolory pastelly look. Now I'm going to take the a uh, cake comb and do that same technique where I just pull like so. All right, so now when I go to stick something on there, yay, it sticks, right? <laughs> okay, so even like, see how I'm just taking some of these little non pearls and I'm just flicking them and they're just sticking on the side. That definitely would not have happened just a few minutes ago, right? Okay, doing that, let's add some more cute little Easter eggs. Are there any questions at this point? Because at this point, I'm just gonna start like, I'm gonna zone out a little bit. <laughs> this is where I get like, I block out all the cares in the world. And I just, you know, I just think about where this perfect little sprinkle needs to end up. One question. All right, what's our question? Any tips for decorating when coming to piping and decorating? Oh, like, uh, oh, like actual tips, like which tips I use? Oh, well, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you, like, well, I mean, I could tell you a bunch of the numbers, but I don't know. I. I don't retain that that much. I have, Michael's has so many frosting tips available. If you're talking about the actual tool, I would say if you can, you know, if you can spare to go splurge a little bit on tips, it's so worth the investment. They're not a ton of money, but what's so fun to do is just get them home. Actually, I'm going to pause this for one sec so I can explain and show. So here's a parchment paper. Do you want to, I don't know if you want to see me not overhead for this, but I'm going to set this back here. So what you can do with your, actually I have a tip somewhere here, don't I? Okay. This is an open star tip. Can you see that? Is that better? Like that. Okay. So I would just go to Michael's, splurge a little bit, and buy some, some tips. Okay, what you can do, which is so easy, where's another, I'm going to grab another bag. Sorry, I'm kind of audibleing this at this stage. And I'm going to put some frosting in here. And what I'm going to do is just on parchment paper, so easy. You're going to take your, your tips. It's just going to be like arts and crafts day. You're going to take your tips. You're going to take bags and you're just going to get a parchment paper and you're going to say, oh, what happens if I do a squiggly line with this tip? Ooh, that's cool. That's what it looks like. Oh, what is happens if I do a circle with this? Oh, it looks like a cool little rose. What if I do a straight line? Oh, it's super textured and that looks awesome. What if I do a dollop and just pull up? It looks like a cute little flower. So the beauty of the parchment paper and just having a heyday is then you just take your frosting. It's not on food. No one's been like 
well, maybe someone's been licking it and eating it, following your little trails. But then you just put it back in your bag and then you grab another tip, grab another tip, put the frosting in the other bag with another tip and then just keep playing and figuring it out for yourself. So the different looks that you can get with tips are just like beyond and so fun. And I would just say, just play around with it, but you don't have to waste, you don't have to waste your product, right? You can make your frosting, play with it, put it back in. You can put it in your Tupperware, put it in a piping bag, seal it, put it in the fridge or freezer, and then use it when you're actually like going to use the cake to decorate. So I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Oh no, I'm okay. But thank you. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I'm glad that was helpful. I'm glad that was helpful. So, okay, how are we doing on, oh, let's add a few, let's add some of these cute little wafer papers too, because I don't know, so my, sometimes my husband teases me and he's like, you should just stop while you're ahead, you know, but when there's so many options with all these cute toppers and icing decorations and things, it's just, it's just too much and it's too fun to just keep adding. Okay, so in this little tackle box too, there's these pressed candy flowers. We have like little tulips, little daisies. Look at these fun little Easter eggs. It's just so fun. And I literally could get lost in this. Well, and I have, and that's probably why my children and husband tease me <laughs> about just, you know, stopping while stopping while I'm ahead, but it's too fun. Okay. So, and not when even these little bunnies, I'll put some bunnies on the top because you can't have a Easter cake without a little bit of bunny on there. Okay. So back to the whipped frosting. I know we're getting kind of close on time, but this is what I wanted to show you is the difference in the frostings. So Hopefully when I pipe this on the top, you will be able to see, I don't know if you'll be able to see all the way, but that's okay. Just trust me when I tell you that using a buttercream and using like a whipped fluffy frosting, they're, they're just different. They're not, the buttercream is just like grittier and stronger and the whipped is just lighter and fluffier, right? So it'd be so fun for you to try the new product and then just let us know what you guys think. So what I'm doing here is it's been, now it's been kind of setting up here on the table and I'm just gonna cut, a, just gonna cut the tip of this piping bag off, just straight line. So I'm just gonna make a round hole because we're using this without a piping bag. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do little tiny, swirly ah little tiny swirlies like that don't worry we'll come on we'll come on come back around with um the green it's still kind of cold <laughs> it's okay we'll make it work you guys i promise if if you do this at home and you're not having to juggle between lights and cameras and whatnot you'll have you won't have to worry about this part okay so all I'm doing is like making little tiny swirls okay okay so just kind of little tiny swirls like that we're just gonna fill in we're gonna have some bigger carrots we're gonna have some so doing the swirls, I know right now it doesn't all the way look like anything other than soft serve ice cream, right? But when I come back with a little, little bit of green, you'll be able to see kind of the effect that we're going for. And just doing these little spirals. Again, I'm doing like the tiniest, littlest motion. I'm just going like this, bloop, 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 just little spirals. Now we're going to take... I'm going to take the green frosting that I'm massaging just a little bit. And 
if you had like a smaller open star tip at this point, I would use that. But what I'm doing is just cutting, oops, we're gonna cut the tip off. And then I'm kind of just snipping the bag because I don't have a tiny little tip at this point, but we're gonna just try to get it a little bit textured. And then we're gonna come, ah, I'm gonna come back on top. Oops. This is when it would be helpful to actually have the star tip. Actually, let me try this guy. We're gonna try the bigger one. It just has a little bit of the pink frosting in there from me showing you <laughs> some tips for tips, but that's okay. We're going to add it like so. Give me just a sec while I push out the pink. Okay, there we go. So I'm just taking the tip. Oops. And it's so, <laughs> guys, this is funny. I think it's because it's under these lights. Anyway, you get the point. You take your tip and it will be smaller than this bigger one. And you can just press the tip into the top of the carrot. And you can kind of just pull it away. I'm gonna pull it up like that. And then I'll touch it up to make it look like their actual carrot. But again, at home, hopefully you're not working under, <laughs> under these conditions which are great conditions because it's just a kitchen with frosting and friends, but anyway. Okay, so we have some carrots that have seen better days, but I have all the faith in you in doing it at home with a smaller tip. And then what we're gonna do, I'm actually gonna take some more of this pink. How are we on timing? We have a few minutes. And I'm just gonna take this pink frosting and kind of do some fun other little embellishments on the top. So if anyone has any other questions at this point, I can definitely talk while I'm, you know, using all these fun sprinkles and whatnot. Um, no more any questions? Everyone has. Has their questions answered? Okay, so I'm just taking, I'm just doing like little pink dollops because why not? I'm gonna put some of the bunnies on the dollops. I'm gonna add a few, like we're gonna do this. A few other little, their little carrot friends. I'm gonna let that. So we have these cute little bunny bums. We can have some. It's hard for me to like, cause you guys are facing this way, but I'm back here. So, you know, we're just gonna do some cute little, cute little bunnies peering through. See. We put one over here by this carrot. And put a little little guy here. Okay. That seems kind of set up. You sure no one has any other questions? No? That's okay. That is okay. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm just gonna kind of keep doing this. Um, trying to think if there's any other, any other little, oops, little tips that I can share. Oh, I will say, there we go. If you rather win,
when you make your fun cakes, be sure to tag Michael's, tag Sweet Tooth Fairy. We definitely love to see all your creative effort. And really, truly, it's it's such a joy to watch. I'm not even joking. It's one of my greatest joys in life is to share share and like be in this community with so many other fellow creative people. I'm not saying I'm super creative. I'm you are super creative. I just just like to play with sugar. <laughs> but no, it's so fun to see and it's just so fun to watch and see what everyone comes up with. All right, let's see where's our other Maybe what I'll do is hey, we'll just do a little do like a little uh border and take some of those same little sprinkles and jimmies and just put them, put them around the edge. Also, there's always a front and a back to a cake. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. Someone has a question. Yeah. So they ask if I'm doing two different colors, the piping technique will still uh, will the piping technique still apply? Or is it best to do one full color then add the other in the pack? Oh, so um the question is. If I'm doing the piping technique, what was the question? Well, if I'm doing two different, if I'm doing two different colors, the piping technique still apply. Will the piping technique still apply? Like with the carrots, do you, you think? So, if I'm understanding you correctly, are you? If you're talking about piping the little embellishments on the top with two different colors, I would. So. I use I use the technique. I don't know. I I don't haven't seen other people use it, but that probably means it's not the best. <laughs> but I think it works. It works really well for me. So if you have like different colors of frosting that you're gonna be piping with, and you have maybe you have like limited amount of tips and you don't have like the couplers, which for me personally, I they, I get lost, they break, they end up mangled in the dishwasher. I just, I can't do the coupler thing. It hasn't been super successful for me in my life. But what I do is I will put like my separate colors in different bags, right? So we have our pink or green or orange, and then I'll just keep the, the tips in separate bags. So then let's say you only have like one star tip, but you kind of want to like move between colors or let's say you dedicated and you did all the carrots that you thought you were going to do, but then you're looking at your cake and you're like, I want to do another one. It's so easy. You can just take the color out, put the new color in, and then you just will want to like squeeze out. There'll be a little bit of frosting that will still kind of be stuck towards the end of the tip, but you just squeeze it a little bit and then the new frosting will come through. I hope, I don't know if that's actually what you were asking, but if it wasn't, ask again, <laughs> please. And I'll try to explain. But for me, that's just has kind of worked better. You do go through more bags, but um, again, there's a lot of affordable bag options at Michael's. And I just think it's so much, so much easier to go that route. Um, so hopefully that's what you were asking. I don't know if it was, but if it wasn't, I hope that was somewhat helpful. Um, okay, does anyone else have any other thoughts, feelings, words of encouragement, anything? We're out of time. Okay, so thank you again so much for being here. I wish I could like see you all and hear you all and have you here with me in real life, but this is the next best, next best thing. Um, I hope you have a wonderful Easter again. I believe in you go easy on yourself. Don't be afraid to just like be creative, think outside the box.
and um, it, it'll be so fun. If this is a process, don't beat yourself up. If you try it and it doesn't look a particular way, I promise it's just like anything in life. Practice, practice, practice. Having the right tools, having the right, you know, embellishments and things makes your life so much easier. So happy Easter. Come back, check the Michaels website. I'm back almost monthly doing these classes and it's one of my favorite things. So thank you again for being here and we will catch you next time.